Okay, so for those of you who would like to discuss this even further, I have been receiving revelation on this topic a lot, and I would be happy to share more information with you. So um, one of the, the important topics for beginning the conversation is that when God created you, you were matter unorganized. And so that that process of organizing intelligent matter and helping you to evolve to the point of becoming a god, um, the process is a little bit more complicated than what we kind of presume. We we presume that it's like having a child where a child already has their personality and um um it's, it's a little bit different when God is forming us into who we are, but we don't really need to get too lost on that topic. Um, what's really important is just that this is the natural next stage of your, your being that God has given you for the evolution process and, um, and bringing everything back together, bringing the fallen natural part of you, bringing your spirit, bringing your flesh to a new space. So we're not going backwards. You're not looking for the other part of your soul and thinking I'm incomplete. We are creating new. We're moving forward. We're changing. We're evolving. And so, yes, it is true that a part of your spirit is, um, it's it, when, when we've learned about the one third that has fallen it is a third of each of us that has fallen. And, um, and so a part of us has been preserved in the Godhead as the Holy Ghost, as the part that has direct communication with God in the Godhead. And, um, and then that part of us is the, the spirit that we feel when it connects with us, when, when God is talking to us, but God doesn't talk to us directly that God talks to our, the, perfect, pure, preserved part of our spirit. That is the Holy ghost. And, um, and so the, the flesh, it is this beautiful opportunity to bring all those pieces back together and to evolve moving forward, but also picking a companion and having a companion of the opposite gender. And I'm sorry for that part of the discussion. Um, but it has to do with matter um, the, the original division of matter and bringing back together, but a new, not going backwards to your original creation. Like it's you, there's no possession. There's no ownership over this matter. It is intelligent matter that is evolving and in picking somebody that you love, somebody that you would like to evolve with, somebody that you would like to become one with. And becoming one with the spirit, the mind, and the body. And I, I kind of call the mind the energetic body because it's where you kind of hold on to everything. It's where you hold on to stuff. And when, you know, you talk about releasing and letting things go, where's that coming from? And um, we, t we tend to hold on to things. And those are the things that we work on overcoming or releasing or moving through. And so when I talk about opening up and embracing and accepting, it's not the same as wanting more suffering. It's not the same as wanting to relive things over and over and over. It's, it's more what I've seen when I have been observing the angels and the process that they have had to go through when they've had incredibly difficult life experiences. And it's, it's a process of deeply honoring their experiences in the past and allowing themselves to become new, allowing themselves to evolve and move forward and having a deep appreciation for those difficulties because it's created who you are today. It's created this, this intelligent being that is becoming very godly and, um, and the thing is, we don't know what our potential fully is. And so we're following the steps that God has given us through the teachings of Jesus Christ. And, um, and so the natural, the natural next step in being able to talk to God directly is needing to also evolve because your, your body cannot be in God's presence. And, um, and so it's a gift. And so there is a responsibility with it and recognizing the thoughts that I'm choosing 
um, I am creating energy with each of my thoughts. So that thought energy is either bringing me closer to God or further away from God. And I can take responsibility for that. But the state of the world around us is going to get worse and worse and worse. And I asked if I could see the city of Enoch. And I want to look at my notes to make sure that I'm um, following everything. Um, the city of Enoch. It was a really beautiful opportunity when I asked to understand from their perspective, but I was able to see it very differently. They, they, they were doing things right and they wanted to help us. They were like, Hey, is there a time in which the world will be so dark that our light could really benefit others? So it's more than just serving mankind. It's, um, being given an opportunity and so they, they went to sleep and kept perfectly preserved. And there are prophecies and near-death experiences speaking of um, a city coming down into Adam on Bayamon and, um, and beings of higher intelligence <laughs> bringing, like, collecting people and bringing them like their portals. And, and that's really just the easiest way to kind of explain, not even easy, but it's, it's hard to explain it without explaining everything. Because as soon as we start talking about that sacrifice, we have to start talking more and more and more. And, um, and I have been learning about the sacrifices that Christ would like us to learn when it comes to healing the sick. And when it comes to touching somebody and having instant healing and what, what all goes into that. Um, and I have a lot to talk about on each of these topics. And so when the city of Enoch comes down and they invite us, I think the, the whole purpose is that the world is extremely dark at that time and we need to come together and we need to shine that light together. And that this invitation is for us to get started right now before things get really dark, because things are about to get very, very dark. And so Here's the thing, you guys, you can focus on that all you want. You can focus on the war and the politics and, and everybody else being at fault. And it's just going to suffocate you. And it's not about turning a blind eye and, and even turning the other cheek is it's a completely different concept, like of what turning the other cheek really means and what it really entails. We simplify it based upon thinking it's, it's just being taken advantage of. And it's so much more beautiful and rich than that. And, um, here's the thing and the city of Enoch, if they're going to come down and begin building, we need to be worthy of it. We need to get started. And this, this is about changing and becoming new. It's not about becoming who we were before we had a body in the pre-existence. It's about evolving. And, um, and I don't know how many people have already awoken to this. I think a lot of people are doing it right now. I'm starting to see a lot of people starting to talk up about this and, um, and I have, I have the opportunity as well. And I would love to, to share anything that I possibly can with you. And I love comparisons, but I, I want to say before I move on too much that regarding the city of Enoch, um, I, I don't want to get into specifics because things can obviously change. I was shown in about five years is when it'll, it'll come about. So around 2029, 2030, um, that they would be returning before that that's not the same as Christ returning, but anyhow, um, that the politics are going to get some, something similar to a monarchy or a one world order. And, um, those that are in leadership will not be in leadership for very long. And so the thing is we, we, are the, we need to be careful to remember that we're, the, we're a team. We're brothers and sisters. We all want the same thing. We all want to feel better. We just don't know how. We think we would feel better when all these changes occur and when other people make better choices. And, um, and we kind of even feel like, see, look, you messed it up. Um, but that's, that's not true happiness. True happiness is elevating and becoming like God and evolving and opening up our arms and inviting everybody else to join us.
And so we can either all go down at war with one another, or we can remember who the true enemy is. It's not you. It's not me. We're not enemies. Just because one of us believes one way and the other one believes the other way, it doesn't mean we're enemies. Not at all. We're all doing the exact same thing. We all have the same potential as beautiful, intelligent beings to evolve, to be more like God. And all of the teachings are in the scriptures, but when you don't really believe that translation is possible, or if you don't even know that that's what we're working on, it's hard to wake up. And it's hard to embrace what you're churning into, that things are changing. <laughs> and my favorite is to just accept that exercise. And as you do, you're able to get through it so much quicker because you're partnering with God and, and not always is healing the answer. And a lot of times that miracle really is just the change of heart. And a lot of times once you have that change of heart, the miracle happens and the healing happens. And it, it goes hand in hand with awakening. And when you're awakening mentally and you're reaching that deep humility space and you're taking responsibility for all of your thoughts and you've been invited, invited to, to join God complete as a whole complete being, the, the evolution process starts and nobody's being forgotten. If you want it, you just need to do the, the work, taking that responsibility and doing the work and, and, um, and the invitation ha is there. It is there for everybody. And if you take a look at inward and you pray, you're going to feel that invitation is there too. And it all makes perfect sense. And, um, um, and so when, when Christ was, was healing the sick, some of the, the points that I, I, I feel are important is, um, becoming one with that other person really allowing, you know, the, the feelings of an impact where they feel other people's junk. Um, what if we embrace it? Because we remember that suffering isn't the enemy. Suffering is the path to happiness. It's not in the way of happiness. And so if you deeply believe that, then the person that you are serving, you will be okay becoming one and feeling what they're feeling. And sometimes it breaks your heart. And that's okay because it is, it is you feeling the need to improve, you feeling that deep suffering that is preventing you from being with God. And, and maybe it's not even preventing you from being God with God. Maybe it's the path to being with God. And, and it is something that we can open up and embrace because it is a part of the intelligence process that that God is giving you. He's giving you that suffering to help you to come closer, to recognize the parts of yourself that you can master and being able to make that sacrifice for one another and saying, I will give up the comfort that I want. I will give up the health, happiness, and healing that I want. And, um, and that's okay. I'm going to give it up whether you're working on it for yourself or with somebody else, like I am willing to sacrifice everything I've ever wanted so that I can be like God and do things God's way, not my way anymore. And then being um, really honoring your past, honoring that other person and where they are right now. <coughs> Just because you're at this stage of your journey and they're at this stage, they don't have to jump up. They can take it a step at a time and you can really honor whatever plan that God has for that other person and whatever the purpose is for that mission. And same with yourself. Maybe you're working on one area of your life versus another area in one area. Healing is absolutely being offered another area. You're not ready yet. And that's okay. It's not all at once. It's a process. And it will take a few years for us to get all of this organized and sorted out. And it's this beautiful visual representation of merging and becoming one and no longer fighting, no longer fighting, submitting, fully opening up and embracing, sacrificing for one another, becoming one with one another, bearing that burden with one another, honoring that other person in the way that they need to be honored. And I don't have all the answers, but God sure does. And so being willing to take it to God. And opening up and saying, please use me as a vessel to do good in other people's lives. Please help me to bless. Show me what 
what you would like. This isn't what I want. Maybe what I want is for that person to heal, but maybe that's not the miracle that they need. And so when you have that change of heart and they have that change of heart, whatever that miracle looks like is God. Um, another thing I want to share with you is um, pulling up my notes, giving everything away. Okay, so when we are fully participating in what I consider either the law of tithing or the law of consecration, it's truly sharing and giving everything away. And um, you might say, okay, what in the world does that mean? Is that about money? Okay, so how about this? Let's look at it this way. Um, there is a TV show called The Summit. And granted, I know I was just talking about how you can't serve two masters and watching television thinks for you. And so you can't be working on being responsible for your thoughts and um, becoming one with God and being intentional with your thought energy and organizing your thought energy and um, being able to, like one of the things is directing your thought energy. Are we going to share it openly? Are we going to share it with just one person? What is my intention? How can I handle the energy that's being shared with me? Um, is it about me? No. What is that person sharing? What are they really asking? What would God like me to do? How can I be a vessel for God to bless this other person in the way that they're sharing energy with me? And, um, and then taking responsibility for the energy that I'm sharing with other people, especially when it's scattered and disorganized. Um, that way I can be more conscious and more careful with the thoughts that I'm creating. And that it's a daily practice. This isn't like a quick, easy making it better. As soon as I start feeling judgmental, God's showing me the parts of me that I need to work on, that I can strengthen, that I do have the power to do this. And you're going to start feeling things changing. Like I was, I was working on how, how can I move my body as a translated being where it is no longer me using my desire, but I am one, one with God, one with my body, one with my mind, one with my spirit. And I was like, okay, move. And I'll get back to the summit in a minute. Sorry, I, I, my mind is everywhere, right? That's just like everybody else. It's disorganized and scattered. Um, if I'm trying to do this, I'm like, let me just practice with my hand because I don't know how to heal the canker sore. I don't know how to heal the broken bone. Now it worked. I did get those two things healed, my canker sore and my broken bone. I was able to do the process and they healed. Um, but I have not been able to overcome that lump on my hand, that yucky, nasty, ugh, it's gross. Um, and I've had MRIs and it's, it's not cancer, but it's not good. And so <coughs> I'm excited. So if I'm practicing being new and, and moving, um, as one evolved, um, new person, <laughs> if I can't heal something that I don't, I don't understand that process well enough, what would I do if I'm moving my hand? And so I'm like thinking, okay, well, how do I move my hand normally? <laughs> it, it's kind of natural. I don't sit here. Like if I'm sitting here saying, move, 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 I don't move my hand with my thoughts, move, move, move. My hand moves instinctually. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So if my body moves instinctually, how would my body move instinctually if I was a godly being? So if it's all instinct and my thought patterns are on becoming new and being one with God, can my body move instinctually as a new person? And it can. I've been practicing and practicing and practicing and it can. It's, it's hard work. Um, but I've been able to get my hand to move and that's how I got my canker sore to move or to heal instantly. And, and it's kind of a big combination. Do I need that canker sore to communicate something? Am I listening? Um, is there something I need to sacrifice and give up? Is it a change of heart? Is it an awakening? Um, or is it becoming new and elevating and translating? And for the canker sore, it was translating, same with my tailbone. Um, and so that was, that was a beautiful surprise. <laughs> um, however, with this, 
it's more. And so that's okay. That's okay. Um, so let me, let me give you the comparison of the summit. So in, in the TV show, the summit, um, the, and I hope this doesn't ruin it for anybody. I'm not trying to ruin anything for anybody, but the, the idea is there's a group of people and they are all trying to get to the summit of a mountain amidst a whole bunch of different trials and challenges. And, um, the last three to get there win a million dollars or whatever's left. And there's a bunch of tricks and gimmicks and, and difficulties and extra trials and voting people off and stuff like that. And um, one of the seasons at the end, um, <clears throat> the remaining three technically are supposed to divide up the money that is remaining from that million dollars, whatever is, is still being offered as a reward. And, um, but instead they had everybody who lost decide how to divide up that money amongst the winners. And, um, and then in the next season, it was the first person to touch the bag of money got to decide how the money was divided amongst the remaining three people. And so what was so beautiful is the comparison that God was showing me from this visual representation. So let's say that at judgment day, what if it's not just God judging you? What if it's everybody that was in your life, your enemies too? All the people that you climbed over to get to who you are today. All the, all the people that served as your opposition and all of the people that served as your partners, your family, your loved ones. And that everybody gets to say, and you know what, that would make sense because that's exactly what, I mean, the scriptures talk about similar things as when we want to be the ones judging, when we want to hold somebody accountable, when we want to see that that person um, has learned their lesson or that they um, walk a mile in our shoes. And, and so how different would that be when we are learning to have a softer heart for our enemy? What if, what if we we stopped seeing that enemy as the person that was in the way um, that ruined our lives and instead look at it as an opportunity for us to actually get to the top. If it wasn't for those challenges that they presented, those trials that they presented, we never would have made it. You know? Yeah, it was God that got you there. But... It was also all the people that you kind of climbed over to get to where you are too. And how do you get to the top? Well, I got to the top because of God. Well, don't you want that for the people that are still suffering, for the people that are still lost? Don't you want that for them too? Isn't that the ultimate goal? That we want the people that are still lost in darkness to have that opportunity the same way that we had that opportunity. You know, if we're completely closed off thinking, well, I'm entitled to that opportunity because, you know, I'm a good person. Well, you were in a dark space for a while too. And God loves you enough that he found you. So we should want the same for our enemies. And if we can get to that space where we are no longer holding that person accountable, where we actually want to give it all because my heart is so changed that if I reach the whole enduring to the end and the mansions in heaven and God says, here's your reward. And you say, you know what? I'm good. Thank you. But my enemies are still lost. Can I give it to them? Would that be appropriate? Isn't that what Christ did for us? That's what he did for us. I can't be so egotistical as to think that I just earned it or I just deserve it because it was so hard and it was so hard. 
but the true heart of Christ can see that I was suffering and God's love is what saved me. And if God is offering me a reward, what about those that are lost that I had to climb over to survive and I had to overcome the challenges that they presented to survive? Don't we want them to also have those same opportunities? That doesn't mean that they're going to listen to the call, but don't we want them to have those same opportunities? And in the second season, the other season of the summit and the money, it was the first person who chose, who grabbed the money that got to choose and who gets divided. What if, what if it's so critical to remember that this is a partnership? This isn't about me being invited to translate. It's all of us. It's a partnership. We're doing this together. I didn't get to this point alone. It's all of us. And once we see that, and we start acting as a team, as a partnership, God's the one that gave it all to us. All of this is from him. All of the gifts that I have are from God. All of this revelation that I've received, that I have kept, and been very careful who I share it with, it's what we all crave. It's what we're all seeking. I can't hold it to myself anymore. It's not there. I've seen such amazing miracles and God has shown me all the deeper mysteries of his kingdom. And, and I mean, not all, sorry, as of right now, it feels like all. <laughs> um, and my patriarchal blessing says that, and that God will, will reveal the deeper mysteries of his kingdom to me. And I will get to teach my brothers and sisters and go about saving the souls um, with while walking with my Savior and the prophets. And I believe that's true. I believe that's what I can do. And I believe that's what I'm doing. And I've dedicated my life to doing so. And so I am going to dedicate to opening up more and shining this beautiful light and no longer being afraid to speak up, no longer being afraid to tell you what revelation I've received and sharing it with you because maybe you are hungry for that and maybe you are dying of thirst in the desert and these are things that you have been seeking and craving and a part of you that has been desperate needing that friend needing somebody to embrace you, somebody to share in this journey with you, to truly bear those burdens <laughs> and to truly share and participate as one. And so the invitation is there for us all to translate, to become one with God, to truly connect with him. We no longer need an intercessory because that invitation is there. Once you're willing to take responsible responsibility for those thoughts and start fine tuning them and start dedicating each of your thoughts. And it's, it is hard work. Um, but I'm willing to commit my time. I'm willing to make those changes and to say that I'm not a perfect person. And I'm humble enough to admit that I have been lost. And that doesn't mean I'm this great big sinner. It means we've all been lost. When I asked if I could hear my song resonating from my spirit, I just heard the wailing and the crying and the complaining and the suffering. We've all been lost on a dark planet. We're all, it is humbling and it is not an easy step to get into because we, we, we are more used to blaming somebody else. We are more used to feeling like the victim and, and there's still that part of us that feels like I'm not good enough. And then there's that part of us that feels like I'm, I'm right. <laughs> and, and what if everything is right and everything is wrong? It is all with a purpose, but we really are given an invitation to be one with God. That is what Christ was here to teach us. 
and Christ will return once we learn that lesson. And once we fully accept that invitation that he has offered, and once we dedicate ourselves so much that the natural next step is that evolution of translation and being able to connect with God directly and communicate with him directly, but he can't communicate with you directly with your immortal imperfect body. And so you start to change. And as a translated being touches another person, it is this beautiful invitation to come join us. You haven't been forgotten. It's a reminder. It's an awakening. It's shouting praises. It's a song. It's a song back to our Heavenly Father, back to our Creator. It is like the student finally learning, <laughs> finally getting the message, and then turning around and desiring to teach others and saying, I got the call. I took those steps. You guys, let's do this together. I'm, this isn't for me to just run and say, I'm chosen. This is to say, oh my goodness, it's there for all of us. I can't believe we've missed that. Let's go. Let's go. Everybody arms wide open. It doesn't matter what all bad stuff is happening in the world. You guys, the book of revelations has told us that for a reason so that we would know it's not a mistake. It's not one person doing something bad. One, one corrupted leader. It is part of the destiny because it has to happen. People have to choose one or another. Things are speeding up right now and it's time to choose. And it is something that we have been told from prophets. It is time to choose. It is the last days. It is time to choose, but it's now like the awakening has happened. It's time to choose. So the world falling apart is supposed to happen. It's giving us an opportunity to choose. It is, it is in the book of Revelations so that we know it's not a mistake. It's supposed to happen this way because we're either going to look at everything falling apart and it's going to pull us down or we are going to look at the translation and the light and it's going to bring us up. So which side are you on? You get to be responsible for your thoughts and your choice in this matter. This is an invitation to everybody. You're either going to hear the invitation or you won't. And I believe most of you are good. I believe most of you want this. And you've been seeking this answer. And you're ready for this invitation. And that you feel it deep within. And the rest of it is going to happen between you and God. And I will share as, as the opportunities present and, um, and as it's appropriate, and I will share more videos and open up to you more. And I invite you to do the same. And I invite you to take this to God and make that choice. And you get to take that responsibility for your thoughts and your actions and your words and your light. Are you shining light or are you shining darkness? Are you creating? Or are you eliminating and destroying? You get to choose what you're doing and where your thoughts are. And so be aware of what you're watching. Be aware of who you're talking to and what's coming in. And we are still in a world with people who are going to challenge you. And yeah, deciding how to handle that is not going to be easy. So we need to practice now in your families, practice when you're alone, practice in your prayer, so that when somebody comes at you with hate and rage, how are you going to respond? I think turning the other cheek is like being aware that the evil's out there, but not letting it come in. What if it just brushes off of you? You're in the world, but you're not of the world. It doesn't have to come in. It hits you, but it just... Okay, that person is choosing evil. We can pray for them. It's sad. It's a part of their journey, and it's their choice. And sometimes that person is going to hit you because they feel bad about themselves, and they're still in a place of blame. And you were there once, too. Right? And you're a good person. You're listening to this video because you are ready for translation. 
which means maybe that other person that just hit you is seeking that too. They're just acting out because it, it hurts. And they think that feeling better is, is by blaming it on somebody else. And you had to learn the hard way too, that that's never going to make you feel better because people aren't going to, people aren't going to make you feel better, but God can. And that's going to take place within you. And when somebody else hits you, you can either pray for them and see if God can use you to do good and to bless them, or you can walk away and set that boundary and take care of yourself. Keep focusing on shining that light. Okay, I feel like this video is complete, and um, thank you for watching. And I hope that you hear that call. I hope you hear that invitation to wake up and elevate, evolve become new. It's going to feel a little bit different. My body feels all tingly, a little itchy, a little tingly. There's a growth taking place. There's a change taking place. And, and spiritually, I got to see it. Verbalizing it, it's a whole nother ball game. But it was an invitation. It was between me and God. And um, I didn't force it. I didn't do something in specific. I just followed these steps and started practicing so that God could trust me. He could know that I was going to follow through. If he's going to trust me to translate for him and speak his words and represent him, he needs to know that he can trust me and that I'll follow through. And so speaking up and sharing these messages and following it as God's way, not my way when I have the conversation. It's not some great mystery that I'm holding. It is, it is me letting God use me to use my voice. So open up and use your voice too. So let God speak through you. And you can do this, you guys. I love you. Bye.